Yo, what up, heavy mommies, and welcome to the Cosmic Perspective. On today's episode, I want to talk to you guys about some things that I've been thinking about lately. Um, now, I love doing these solo episodes, and, and one of the reasons why I love doing them is because it allows me to really flesh out a thought. I really can like sit here and kind of just expound on an idea that I might have been thinking about, and I tend to find a flow state with these things, um, very similar to anybody, if you've ever watched Jason Silva, he has this ability to go on these long, very, very poetically worded uh, diatribes, and he, and he does it in a way that I think only Jason could do it. And sometimes it's a little extra with the words, but I love it. I appreciate it. And I love his love of language and I love the way that he expresses himself and I love the passion behind it. And I think that's so important to have the passion behind what you're saying. You know, if, if I were to sit up here and, and say some shit that I didn't really believe in, you guys would fucking know immediately. You would know immediately be like, this motherfucker doesn't believe a word he's saying, you know? And unfortunately some people fall for that, you know, i.e. Trump. Um, but I, I think in today's day and age, it's way easier to realize when somebody's being authentic. And one of my favorite things to do with this platform is to be able to be authentic and to talk about things that really just don't have an easy place in any other medium. So, you know, if I was making a film or something, you know, I don't have the same ability to use direct language to communicate an idea. I, I, in some ways have more freedom from the metaphorical standpoint and I could do it through storytelling and actions and characters and situations, whatever. Um, but if I'm doing it just from talking, it, it allows me to really get down to the, the heart of something. And when you're listening to one of these podcasts, ideally, this is a situation where you want to listen. That's the whole point. You know, <laughs> if, you're, if you're listening to this right now and you don't want to listen to it, I don't know what you're doing. Uh, turn it off, you know. But I think for me, I love expressing myself and I love I love being able to communicate ideas in my head uh, out into the world and getting feedback. You know, I want to know, have have any of the ideas that I've communicated been something that you thought of that you had never really been able to get the words out for, you know, I want to know these things, give me feedback. And in fact, I actually really want you guys to, um, start sending in emails to me and, and ask me questions, you know, say things that you want me to cover on the podcast. Um, you know, I'm all about democracy, baby. <laughs> I'm all about this being, you know, it, it, I want it to be a dialogue, you know? Yes. I love, uh, I love going out here and fucking talking and saying whatever I want to say. That's awesome. It's empowering. And that's one of the things that I, I chose about getting into podcasting was for this reason. I want to be able to say what I want to say and God damn it. Nobody's telling me what I'm going to say. Uh, but I also want to have a dialogue. I want to have communication with people. I want to bounce ideas off of people. I want to see the impact that I can have, um, both in, uh, both in my effect on you and your effect on me. So this is, this is by all means, you know, this is an experiment. I don't really know what this is going to be or where this is going, but I'm doing it. I'm just doing it. And I was actually recently watching, uh, an H3 podcast. And it was as of the time that I'm recording this, it was like the newest episode that they, that they released. And, uh, m most of the time, if you make it all the way to the end of an H3 podcast, it devolves completely. Uh, but in this case, at the very end, Ethan gave a really inspiring speech about how, you know, you could listen to everybody else's advice and you could hear whatever the fuck, you know, they're going to say. And maybe later after you live some life, it'll have some resonance. But ultimately, none of that thing means anything. The only thing that you're going to learn is what you learn by doing shit. And I, I mean, that's something that I've talked about on this podcast and that's something that I already believe. But it's always so nice to hear it when you hear it from other people. And I think that's where it comes in of what he was saying about like, you know, it'll have a different meaning when you're doing it, you know? So when I'm, when I'm sitting out here and I'm recording these and I'm making the effort to do the thing, I'm making the effort to do what I want to do. Um, if I hear other people doing it, or I hear other people say something inspiring or something that, you know, kind of pushes me in the direction of, of thinking about what I'm doing and reflecting upon what I'm putting out into the world, um, it, it just hits different. And I think that's what I want this podcast to have that effect for is like, I don't want you guys to be relying on me for anything, you know, but I do want you guys to, when you listen to this, I shouldn't even say you guys, men and women. Um, but you know, when you all are listening to this, I want you to use this as fuel, but I want you to already be doing your own thing. 
you know, don't listen to my opinion on anything. And I don't say that to say that I'm not going to have some some valid points. I totally am going to. Sometimes I'm on the money, and I'm not saying this because to toot my own horn, but sometimes I'm I'm on the pulse of things for certain subjects and for things that I really know something about. You know, take it with a grain of salt, like any other you know authority figure or source. And I'm not an authority figure, but um, but at the same time, like understand that all the wisdom that you have is in yourself. You know, you're never going to. You're never going to find the answers in somebody else's answers. You're not. Now, you may get inspiration. You may be able to draw conclusions from somebody else's lessons that they've learned, and you're able to bring it back to yourself. But you by no means are going to get an answer from me. You know, I might inspire you to find your own answer, but I can guarantee you that your brain is already on, on the path of figuring it out. But you need to give it time. And you need to allow those ideas to manifest themselves. You need to give them, you know, you need, it's like a seed, right? You need to plant them. You need to water them. You need to nurture them. You need to give them the right nutrients. And that is all part of the doing, right? That is all part of the process of engaging in the thing that you're trying to accomplish and figuring out step by step what is the next thing you need to do to get closer to that. And part of that is having the foresight, having the understanding of like, okay, well, I have this goal, okay? It's this big lofty goal and it's all the way out here. What can I do now that gets me closer? Not what can I do that solves everything and it all figures itself. And no, you're never going to do that. That's overwhelming. You're going to quit immediately. You know, but if you have like, think about it, if you have like one or two immediate things that you can do that directly will build you towards this vision, then do that. Don't think about it. Don't ask anyone about it. Don't tell anyone about it. Just do it. Do it. <laughs> I just think of fucking Shia LaBeouf. But really, it, it's it's not. I mean, you can sit and theorize about shit all day, but you know, at the end of the day, you're creating imaginary scenarios that may or may not ever manifest. And you're hyping this stuff up in, in your brain. And then when you thought the thoughts and you're thinking it and you and you you tell it to other people. Um, and I'm guilty of this, you know, but when you tell it to other people, you're basically telling your brain, I did it already, you know, cause your brain doesn't fucking know the difference. So, you know, when you're, when you're telling yourself this stuff, you're basically giving your brain a pass to be like, cool, I already accomplished it. Nothing else to work for, you know? And, and it's this own self-defeating thing where if you talk about something enough, but you're not doing it, then you're just creating a reward system that ultimately literally produces nothing and it's not always about producing something i think it's very important for us to take time for ourselves i think it's very important for us to focus on our mental health and make sure that we are good we, you know we got to focus on me we got to focus on everybody focus on me no we got to focus on you you know like uh when i say me meaning i'm you right now we got to focus on me we got to think about who you know who i am and what do i want and you know one of my favorite alan watts talks is where he talks about what do I desire, you know, and uh, Logic used this in The Incredible True Story, and it's an awesome, there's an awesome video, it's like an animation that somebody made, I can't remember, I think it's called After School, maybe, is the YouTube channel, um, and they made an animation to go along with the talk, and it, it's amazing, because the talk itself is powerful, and again, it comes down to, you know, you got to be ready for the message, and you got to be ready to listen to it when it's being told to you, so, you know, even if you watch it immediately after listening to this podcast, it might not have the same resonance that it did for me when I listened to it for the very first time. Um, but those those messages are always available and out there, and they exist all across YouTube. They exist all across the internet. They exist in podcasts. You can find these messages anywhere, and that that's the universe telling you what you need to do, right? But through other people, and that's because we are all it. We are all the same thing. You and I are all part of this universe, and we are all not only a part of this universe, but we are all kind of part of each other. And sometimes when somebody tells you something, that is the universe telling you to do it. Um, and I know that there's, I think there's like an ancient, there's like an ancient Chinese proverb or so, something where it talks about, or no, it's it's talking, it's a story about the Buddha or something, and. And um, it was somebody who realized, and Alan Watts says this in one of his speeches, but um, somebody who realizes that, oh, I'm, I'm everything. I'm, you know, whatever. And 
with this one person as they're walking by is like, hey, avoid that elephant. And I'm butchering the story, by the way. Alan Watts tells this way better because I don't really know the original story. I'm just going off of what Alan said. Um, but he says, hey, like, avoid that elephant. That elephant's freaking out. It's going to hit you. And it's like, yeah, well, you know, I know no harm can come to me because I'm everything. So it's all good. And so it goes and it gets fucking smacked by the elephant. And and then comes back and gets mad at its master. Um, some Krishna something. I'm totally butchering this fucking story. Uh, <laughs> this is this is why you listen to this podcast, guys. For, for ancient <laughs> philosophy-driven stories that are poorly translated. Um, and he goes back and he's like, well, you know, what the fuck, man? I thought I was everything. Why, why did this thing not harm me? It's like, yeah, you're right. You're an idiot. Uh, you are everything. And you are also the guy who told you to avoid the fucking elephant, you know? And so I think everybody can be a message and everybody can be that story. Everybody can be that thing, um, that either guides you in a direction or steers you away from a direction that might be harmful to you. And, your ability to develop the insight and the wisdom to know when is the path and when is the thing that I should go left, when should I go right, you know, developing that intuition, that's really, you know, that's Taoism. That's like understanding the way of life. That is, you know, honing your instincts to be so in the moment that you make decisions and you're making the decisions based on this honed craft of intuition where your instincts naturally guide you towards the truest form of yourself, the truest form of what you are destined to be. And these are abstract ideas. These are not easy things to understand for yourself. And there's only one person who can discover that answer. And that's you. Only you can figure this out, you know, but if you didn't even know to look for that, or you didn't even know that that was a strategy that you could implement, well, then now, you know, Right now, this is me as the universe telling you that this is an option for you. I'm not telling you how to find it. I don't know how you find it. I'm not telling you anything. I don't know. I don't know anything. I only know what I know for me. Right. And I have figured out some things that I feel pretty confident in my intuition. I do think that I tend to make overall fairly decent decisions. I think, I, you know, I wouldn't be in the spot that I'm in in life if I didn't make some good moves, you know, uh, and I I'm not an expert. I'm not your guru. I'm not somebody who you can, you know, you can hang on every word for. I don't want you to worship me. I'm a regular person like everybody else. I got feelings and emotions and I have tough times and I have good times and, you know, I'm just a person, right? But there are some insights that I might find that might be useful to you. And I'm going to tell you in the context of what I've learned and hopefully you will draw your own conclusions based on your own situation, your own variables, your own life, and you will find a way to internalize some things that I say. And that's the goal. You know, one of my main goals of this podcast, and I believe I've talked about it on podcasts, but, you know, I couldn't tell you. I've done now 50, this is going to be 52 episodes. So, you know, I can't remember everything that I've said on it, but um, I know I know that I've talked about how I want to raise the collective consciousness of this planet and not me alone. I'm just part of a wave of it. But um, as one of the goals of this podcast is I want people to think about some of these ideas, some of these ways of looking at the world. And I want people to find ways to raise their consciousness. I want them to wake up and, um, you know, stay woke. Uh, I, I don't like those terms woke. And I, I think it's used in a derogatory way in a lot of ways. And, you know, Aside from the semantics of it, I do want people to raise their awareness. And I think that was like one of like the most profound things that I learned, you know, from psychedelics and then therefore meditation afterwards was it really is just about bringing up your awareness. It's just about raising your awareness of what is going on around you. You know, so much of life and so much of our time that we spend on this planet is largely unquestioned. You know, you kind of you're, you're told like, okay, this is how life works. This is, uh, the United States government was founded and, you know, and like you learn all these facts in school and school's great. I think, uh, the way it's taught is not great. I think they could change the structure, but the purpose of school is good. And I do think the purpose of history is good. I think the purpose of learning mathematics is good. I think the purpose of learning science is good. You know, the basics of what school is all about in terms of educating you is great. I think the implementation could use some work and we could definitely, uh, add certain things in. I would, you know, I, 
I'm all in favor of us learning a little bit more about our civic duties as as uh, citizens and educating people so that they can make better voting decisions and that they can understand what goes into government and, and what allows people to, you know, gain power in our system and what, uh, you know, what is a way that we can kind of level that in a more democratic way. Um, that's all important. I also think we should really be teaching life lesson type things. And this again goes to, you know, my philosophy of like, you know, we're not, we can't give people the answers, but we can give them the tools for them to discover their own answers. Because, you know, to me, it's more powerful for you to discover something on your own than it is to be told something. You know, I was, I was told a bunch of things from Alan Watts's lectures, but I discovered it on my own and what that meant to me. So, you know, the seed was planted by Mr. Watts, but then I discovered my own answers. I figured out the things that I wanted to figure out because I started looking. I, I started asking questions that I didn't even know to ask uh, before. And I think philosophy is one of those courses that actually is really important and is something that, you know, it doesn't need to be your major, but fuck. I mean, we need people to be learning philosophy. And I'd love people to learn philosophy in high school. Um because you don't know who you can inspire. You know, I didn't I didn't really start taking like philosophy classes until college. And luckily at the time that I took it was kind of just the time that spurred off me already getting very interested in, you know, these deep questions about life. And I've I always have been fascinated with the universe. I mean, I call this the cosmic perspective. I know I never talk about space and I fucking should because I'm such a fucking space nerd. Um but but, you know, I've always been interested in the larger questions of life. I've always been interested in, you know, how tiny we are in comparison to the universe and yet how significant we are for existing in the first place and how significant we can be to one another on this planet. You know, we may just be one little monkey on, on the planet of seven billion with, a, you know, who knows however many billions of other animals and insects and fish and whatever. Um but at the same time, we all are so significant in this ecosystem. I mean, one person truly does affect so many people around them, whether it's the people in their job, the people in their family, the, their friend circles, uh, the schools they go to, you know, the presence of one person can dramatically change something. And if you don't believe me, think about think about somebody you fucking hate. <laughs> think about somebody who you think is so annoying. Now, imagine in a room full of your friends that one person comes in. Tell me that doesn't ruin the moment completely, right? One person can completely fuck up a room uh, in terms of its chemistry and the vibe. So imagine that, but on a larger scale, you know, that's the universe. That's us. You know, that's us on this planet is that we are having a profound effect on all the things around us because reality is this co-creation. And I talk about this all the time, but it's like, you know, I affect my environment. I change my environment. My environment changes me in return. Um, and this is something that is obvious the more you think about it, but is kind of a deep, profound realization when you really understand the, the impact and the levels to which this feedback loop uh, actually really affects your day-to-day -day life. And it's something that's easy to overlook because, you you know, sometimes we think of the, the environment as just such a big thing and it seems like it's so independent of us and it's not i mean yes a lot of things can operate outside of your sphere of influence but then you're coming into contact with it therefore adding your sphere of influence to your immediate vicinity at the very least and on top of that having all of the other people's sp sphere of influences all coming around you so even imagine just going on a bus and like there's some random stranger that that goes on the bus if they're having a bad day, that's going to affect somebody on that bus. You know, even if it's just you look at the person, you're like, oh, what the fuck's wrong with that guy? You know, like that, that's going to have an effect on you. And everybody has, you know, without getting too woo-woo, everybody's got energy. Everybody has an energy about them. And everybody has this, like, it's like this invisible fucking sphere around people. And this isn't scientific, uh, but it is something that I think kind of, bears itself out through just experience but like that is a palpable thing if somebody is happy and feeling good and like you're just around them you just feel it it's contagious and and i don't know if it's just part of like human beings ability to 
read nonverbal communication and it's just, you know, it could be pheromones. There, you know, there could be other things that are at play that are literally or physiologically affecting you. But to me, even just the placebo effect or even just kind of the um, the general influence of feeling a certain way based on your interpretation of somebody else, uh, the, all of those things are playing into your mental state. And when you're completely unaware, when you're completely mindless about what you're doing, you're not even conscious that that shit's happening to you. So therefore, it has more influence than if you were conscious of it. Because if you're conscious of it, you can feel that energy and then respond to it in the way that you want to. So if it's a good energy, then you amp it. You amplify that energy. If it's a bad energy, then you try to keep that shit away from you. You know, and that's because you're aware. You're raising your consciousness level. And I think the more that we are able to raise our consciousness collectively, um, the more that we're going to have a more compassionate world. We're going to have a better world for everybody. And it, it doesn't need to be utopia to be better than what we got. And when you know so many people are committing suicide, uh, we got to start looking at what are the fundamental causes of that. You know, So I talk about diseases of despair on my last solo episode. And this is something that Bernie Sanders talks about. Um, this is something that a lot of, you know, the people studying it have talked about. And it's it's this sense of meaninglessness, this sense of purposelessness. And it's hard not to blame people because, or not to blame, it's hard to, it's hard, fuck, I don't know how to word it, but like, I don't blame people. <laughs> it's hard to not understand and and I don't blame them for feeling that way based on the, the society that we've created. You know, we've chosen to say, okay, yeah, that thing that helps kids and like you're raising the child and whatever, like it's not monetizable. So, you know, it's not that important, you know? And so like when you're thinking about all the different things in society that are required for us to have a healthy population, have a healthy mental state to, to uh, develop, you know, good conscious citizens they're not all incentivized and it's not all incentivized economically. It's not all incentivized uh, emotionally, spiritually, whatever, because of the systems that we have in place. You know, the capitalistic system is not necessarily going to incentivize some of these things that are necessary parts of us being happy as a species and not just happiness, but fulfilled. And, uh, you know, if you want to reach that level of fulfillment, well, then we're going to have to factor some of these things in, in our day to day life. And if we're not factoring in, you know, our well-being and other things more than just generating capital capital or making money or producing goods or whatever, if we're not factoring in the fact that, you know, we also have other needs that are not necessarily quantifiable, um, then, yeah, we're going to have a whole society of people that are, are sick mentally, that are sad, that are depressed, that feel like a sense of meaninglessness. And I want more people to discover meaning in their life. And so for some people, you can find it in religion. For some people, you can find it in, uh, you know, sports or, you know, whatever the thing is that, like, you know, really turns you on, you, then you need you need to start going towards those things. And that doesn't mean, and I think this is really important to to dis make a distinction for, that doesn't mean that you got to go be a YouTuber or, you know, go do some fucking shit that makes you famous or whatever. Like, no, you can work a totally regular job. And you can live a completely fulfilled life doing that. And there's no shame in that. And there is no, you're not a lesser person because you decided to go for something a little less ambitious than somebody else. That is totally fine. What is important though, is that you are conscious of that decision and that you are doing it because that is what you actually want. Um, and sometimes we're going to do things that we don't want to do and that's okay, but it shouldn't be all the time. You shouldn't be sacrificing 90% of your life doing things you don't want to do to have 10% of your life be things you wanted to do like that ratio sucks. So, you know, that doesn't mean that you need to work the dream job to get a better ratio than 90, 10, you know? Uh, so for me, part of us, you know, waking up from this nightmare that we're in, uh, in this current system that we've, that we've designed. And it was good for a little bit in the sense that it, it's pushed us to where we're at now. But now we have the resources to make a better system and we're not doing it because of perverse incentives, because of, uh, these revolving doors in Washington and, you know, there, there's a number of things that play into it. And I, that's not the point of this podcast, not to get into that stuff. I talk about it on a lot of other episodes and I'll go into it more uh, in the future, but 
what what to me is more important is finding this like this balance where we really are becoming who we are destined to be and the only way to do that is for you to wake up it's for you to do it it's your responsibility you know there's more than enough resources out there whether it's myself or alan watts or uh aubrey marcus or you know for some people you got like the joe rogan's of the world and you know there's there's a lot of different people who you know, give good, inspiring messages that can um, help you discover what you need to discover about yourself, right? Point you in the direction, uh, give you ideas to think about, to chew on, to digest. Um, but ultimately, the only one who can find those answers is you, and you only you can find it within yourself. And that's going to take time. And that's going to be, you know, contemplation and silence and listening to yourself. And um, the answers are not always going to come when you expect them. And sometimes I think you really need to let something marinate for a while and having the patience and understanding to realize that it's not all going to be figured out right away and that it is going to take time to get there. That is essential. That is important. So, you know, I think for me, an important part of why I'm doing this podcast is to give people some food for thought, to give people an idea that they've never heard before or a way to think about how am I going about my life? Like, I want you to check in on yourself. Okay. <laughs> I want you to check in. How do you feel? You know what? Let's say your name is Steve. What does Steve think about this? What is Steve really doing? What have I been doing the last like five years? You know, if I'm making an honest assessment of my life, what have I been doing? You know, am, am I spending the time that I want to? Am I doing the activities that I want to do? Am I taking care of myself? Like, how is my mental health? How is my, uh, how's my physical health? Um, am I in shape? Am I eating right? You know, all of these things are important. They all are feedback loops. And I can tell you since working this new job, I mean, I get more sleep. I work out consistently. I'm working out at least five times a week. Um, I'm running to the gym, you know, I'm like doing things that I never really did before. Um, and I can, I can, I can see it in myself that I'm feeling better. I haven't smoked weed and it'll be almost two months, uh, in like another week or two. So, you know, these are things that just for me are microcosms of the larger telling of the improvement in my overall mental health and situation and just, you know, betterment of, of who I'm trying to be and where I've wanted to go and where I've saw myself as capable of being but was held back by my environment. And there is a degree where your environment is so bad that you really do have to just fucking get out of it. And so, you know, when you hit that breaking point, you do have to recognize it and you got to make the change. You know, there's only so much change you can make within a given situation before at that point you need to make change the situation. But I think you start by fixing what you can within yourself. And then once you've reached that limit of what you're, you know, within your possibility space, uh, you then need to change it you know, change it as fucking Chris D'Elia would say. Uh, but you need to change it and go to somewhere else and then see where you can grow there. Right. The second you've hit a point where you're like, all right, I'm comfortable and I'm not really growing. You need to look for an opportunity to change something. So do you need to change you? Do you need to change your actions? Do you need to change your diet? Do you need to change the location you're in? Do you need to change jobs? Whatever the thing is, you know, there's going to be something that is probably worth changing and habits are good. And it's good to get yourself into good habits. Uh, but there is a lull to that at some point. There is a point where the repetition and the return on the investment becomes much, much smaller. And it gets to a point where you realize, okay, the only way for me to really start shaking things up is I got to change something. And so over time, you figure that out. You figure out what those things are. And you will eventually tap into th that intuition that I was talking about before where you start realizing when to make the move and you start making it at the right moment. You know, at first, maybe you're a little late. Sometimes you're a little early on a decision. Um, but over time, you're going to get better at honing that skill and understanding when it's time to go where. And so for me, I feel like uh, it's a skill I'm always going to continue to hone and I'm never going to feel like I'm done. And that's okay. That's part of it. You know, life is not meant to be, you get to a finish line. It's kind of, it's all about the experience. And at a certain point it's going to end. And sometimes you'll know when it's going to end and sometimes you're not, you know, so you might as well live it as consciously as possible, as aware as possible, and to live it out through 
such a pure intention of trying to reach this ultimate version of yourself. And I know that not everybody has that interest and not everybody's going to be inclined to go through these things. But I do think it's really important for the ones who are willing to go there and who are willing to listen to these words, who are willing to take in these ideas and not just my ideas, but other, you know, other people's ideas uh, about how to go about life, about how to craft a better world for themselves and not based in a materialism, but based in a true like spiritual connection with existence and life itself. And that purity is something that the more people that we have tapping into that, the more that it's going to have a domino effect. You know, uh, that's why I love Bernie Sanders campaign, <laughs> not to make it political, but that's why I love it is because it's not me, us. That's literally his slogan, not me, us. It's not about him. It's about us. It's about us rising up together to fight against the corporate greed and to fight against the powers that be that have kept the system the way that it is that has allowed for us to get to this place that we are in. And I want to see more people waking up, not just politically, but that would be nice too, uh, but also just waking up to themselves. You know, I, too many people don't really know yourself, like know themselves. Um, too many people really don't. Like when it really comes down to it, if you ask somebody, well, who are you? You're going to get a lot of superficial ass answers. I can assure you, you're going to get a lot of superficial answers. You're going to get a lot of surface level analysis, and you're going to get a story in which they've told themselves based on a history uh, of events and memories that they've codified into this nice long narrative in their novel of life that says that this is who I am. And I think it's important to craft narratives like you can write the story to a degree, but it's also important to understand the very nature of the fact that it is a narrative and that it is something that you ultimately are creating and that it is an egocentric identity creation that you are talking about. Um, yes, there are some some hints of truth that will be uh, sprinkled in with that story, but ultimately at the end of the day, it is a story. And from another person's point of view, maybe that story wouldn't even be written the way that you're writing it. So I think, you know, being the author of your own life is important. Choosing to tell the kind of story that you want to tell is important. Uh, that's all about the intentions, but understanding that you're not going to be able to write every word of this story. You know, this story is going to be one that is going to fly by the seat of your pants. And it's actually more about you improvising and reacting and going with the situations that are presenting themselves to you. Um, so yeah, so, if, you know, something that I know Joey, uh, has talked about on this podcast with me is about how there's two frequencies, there's fear and there's love, and you can operate out of fear, which is what most people operate out of. And I'm not saying that in a, in a derogatory way. It just, it's true. Most people operate out of fear, you know, fear of losing their job, fear of losing their loved ones, fear of losing their money, fear of losing their house, fear of losing their children, you know, you name it, a lot of people operate from a basis of fear. And a lot of people are operating on a basis of anxiety. And in fact, this this system has created a, a system of anxious individuals uh, that we are so anxious that we literally medicate ourselves with it. Um, but if you operate on love, you know, you realize that everybody has something to offer. You realize that even the people you hate, even the people that you despise, that you find absolutely disgusting, they are in a way, a lesson for you to learn. They, they, they are part of the universal love, even if they sometimes operate on the antithesis of that. Um, and in a way, you watching them go through their thing and maybe seeing it as a way of what not to do, it is just as powerful as somebody of who is maybe more of a model that you want to follow after. And so I'm choosing to operate on love. I think that love and not, not romantic love, you know, universal love, I want to operate on the frequency of love. That is my frequency. And that is all I want to tune into. And that's all I want people to tune into with me. And I'm trying to craft this love frequency that I can broadcast out to you all through this podcast, through, you know, YouTube, through the podcast app, Spotify, whatever, and give people an ability to tune into it whenever they want. So when you guys listen to this podcast, you know, sometimes it's going to be silly. Sometimes I'm just going to be fucking around and, you know, uh, sometimes I'll uh, I'll be joined by voices. You know, like uh, like Peter. 
And other times I'm going to be serious and I'm going to be talking about shit like this, where, you know, this is stuff that I really believe in. And this is something that, you know, I live my life according to this. I live my life according to this doctrine of, of trying to be the best version of myself and trying to give as much as I can and, and be a servant to the world, you know? And I think everybody has the ability to serve for whatever, you know, whatever their gift is. I want more people to give that gift. Um, and I think, you know, there's a lot of cliches around this stuff. And some of these words would literally mean nothing if you're not ready to hear them. And if you're not in a place where you can internalize what these things mean. So I understand that, you know, you listen to some of this shit and be like, yeah, okay, Kevin. Uh, but at the same time, you know, for me, when I'm talking about this stuff, I have like actual real memories that I'm tying to when I learn these things. And I, I have this deep knowing that comes from the experiential part of it. And it's because of my awareness and my consciousness of these things that when they happen, I recognize them, I feel them deeper in the moment. And it really is this like uh, amplification of life itself. I really do feel like I live harder now (laughs) and not harder in like uh, a bad way, like harder and like it's more intense you know, when I love, I love when I'm, uh, mad, I'm mad, (laughs) you know, when I'm, when I'm passionate, I'm passionate. And, uh, I think, I think I, I want to see more people really getting in tune and not being in this lull. And, you know, sometimes when people take, uh, certain, certain drugs like anti-anxiety medication and antidepressants, um, sometimes it just puts you into a lull, you know, it doesn't really help your, overall thing it just reduces the negative symptoms and i by all means i'm not like i think for some people antidepressants make sense and you got to do it and you got to correct the balance 100 percent. but i do think that in addition to trying to correct the balance in your brain you also really need to do these other activities and these other things that are just positive feedback loops that are things to feel good about little victories to take throughout the day and if you don't have those little things you know, then what else is going to keep propelling you forward? Because at a certain point, you will run out of energy. You will burn yourself out. I take this from me. I've burned myself out like 10,000 times uh, just from trying to do this and work a job and retail and all this, you know, I've been there. So I understand how easy it is to get in the trap, even with, you know, my awareness and knowledge of what I'm trying to achieve. You know, it, it still didn't stop me from not getting burnt out. You're going to get burnt out. You're a human being. It's going to happen. You're going to hit that point. The importance is to recognize it and then to do the appropriate steps of taking a step back and truly trying to actually recover and not take on too much before you get back into it. Um, so, yeah. So I think, yeah, that's pretty much everything I want to cover on this. So, you know, ultimately, uh, for me, I guess my parting words for all of you is that I want you to think about what do you want? What do you desire in life? And the more you think about it, see it through to its end. Um, Really take that thought all the way to the finish line because sometimes you'll realize your initial wantings or your initial desires are going to end up being a little more shallow than you originally thought, even when they might appear to have depth at first. And when you really see it through to the end, you might realize that maybe this isn't really what I'd want. Like it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't be a a horrible thing, but it's not actually what I want. Um, And the deeper you go down that path and Alan Watts talks about this in that, what do I desire uh, video with the after school animation um, is all about like, once you get to a point where you finally realize that you shouldn't desire anything and it's not that, you know, and that's where it gets really complicated to try to explain what that means. But, um, you, you get to this point of like knowing, knowing what's, you know, what's worth, uh, putting your energy into what's worth the direction in your life and what's worth the investment. And I think that that becomes clear. I really do. I think that becomes clear and that clarity emerges through the stillness, through the contemplation and through the deep asking of the questions. And, um, it's really important to remember that you're not trying to solve everything at once. You're not even trying to solve some of it at once. You know, I think you just need to ask the questions. You need to ruminate on the thoughts and you need to, uh, allow yourself to discover it over time and allow situations and other things with this newfound awareness, this newfound consciousness 
let those things emerge and let those lessons and those dots connect over time through your experiences. You know, you might be doing something as simple as playing a game of pool. Uh, I'm going to say this because I like pool. Um, But you're playing a game of pool and all of a sudden you learn a really deep lesson about life from you. Maybe you rushed a shot and all you had to do was just, you know, if you just took a a couple extra seconds, you would have just made that shot in. Well, you could tell that same lesson about life. And so when you start looking for those lessons in life and you start looking for these micro lessons on a larger, you know, that, that then scale up to a larger scale, you'll find that those answers are everywhere. You can always look for them. They're always available to you. And when you're seeking as a seeker, as, as Jason Silva likes to say, when you're a seeker, you know, those things become very clear and, uh, you start finding answers in everything. And maybe it's a cognitive bias that allows you to do that. But I find it to be so powerful where I feel like I'm constantly learning lessons that are just amazing that are like, damn, like, I should do that more. Oh, like that. This is a mistake that I make a lot, but in a lot of different ways, you know? Uh, and I think that just comes from with, with being aware and examining yourself, but also allowing yourself to be completely in the moment, you know, let yourself truly be present, let yourself truly be where you need to be. And, uh, the rest will follow. It really will. Um, so look inside yourself, meditate, you know, pay attention to your needs, your desires. What do you really want to do? What is your true desire? And then think about, well, you know, what do you need to do to start working towards that? Um, and the, you know, the beginning of all journeys starts with the first step. So, all right. And uh, just like that, I'm out. Peace out, heavy mommies. Subscribe on the YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Um, I got all the links and all the descriptions. So check out all that stuff. Um, but I really appreciate you all. I'm excited to watch this podcast grow over time. I'm just going to keep doing it regardless of uh, who's listening. And and hopefully the audience grows naturally and organically. And the people who were destined to find me, find me. And uh, hopefully I find you as well.